Hello and welcome to the first in a series of three short videos about 12 lead ECGs for the I've Got the Rhythm Facebook group. As this is the first episode, where else could we start but at the beginning? So here we go back to school and give a brief history of the origin of the ECG and the man credited with inventing it, before taking a look at the geometric shape that took his name. Lesson 1 then is history. Willem Eithoven was a Dutch doctor and a physiologist who, in 1903, was credited with inventing the first practical electrocardiogram, and in 1924 he received the Nobel Prize in Medicine for it. This early table model was manufactured by the Cambridge Scientific Instrument Company of London in 1911, and you can see that the patient was required to place their limbs into buckets of saline solution. Fortunately, today's machines are much more portable, and with the advent of adhesive electrodes, it has made obtaining an ECG a much easier task, even if it is less amusing, but the principles still remain. The electrodes conduct current from the skin surface, and the ones placed onto the limbs create three points of contact, four if an earth is used. These three points are the right arm, left arm, and left leg, and from these points, a geometric shape is created known as Eindhoven's Triangle. That will be our next lesson. So, lesson two is about geometry and specifically Eindhoven's Triangle. Eindhoven's Triangle looks at the heart in the vertical plane. The electrical impulses received by the limb leads are fed into the ECG machine and from these impulses it produces six individual views of the heart. AVR, AVL and AVF. They are true leads and they give us three views of the heart. The ECG machine takes the information from these leads and by doing some calculations then creates three more views of the heart. We call these views leads 1, 2 and 3 but they are not really true leads. It is important that for diagnostic purposes the limb leads are not placed on the torso. The computer augments the voltages and provides a printout based on the expectation of limb lead placement. Placement of these leads on the torso does cause changes in the ECG printout, which, although may not be obvious to the reader, these are significant when comparing previous ECGs. Best practice states that if recording a diagnostic ECG using torso placement, then this should be annotated on the ECG for reference purposes. Views from lead 1 and AVL give us an upper lateral view of the heart. Leads 2, 3 and AVF provide an inferior view of the heart. And because lead AVR looks at the heart from the top right, all electrical impulses move away from the electrode, which is why this is predominantly negative on an ECG. Lead AVR is often referred to as the forgotten lead. This is because in isolation it is not used when looking for STEMIs. It is, however, an important lead and with some additional knowledge can give insight into condi conditions such as LAD and LMCA stenosis, triple vessel disease, and the need for a cardiac artery bypass graft. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've found this introduction to ECGs of benefit. And don't forget, never stop learning. Hope to see you all again soon.